Hey kids, I've been told by a lot of people that there's nothing more exciting than the metric system. They may have a point, but I can still prove them wrong. Today, we're going to talk about some specific lesser known units of measurement. First is the Schmidt Pain Index. Now, anybody could tell you that getting stung by a bug tends to hurt, but just how much does one sting hurt compared to another? Are yellow jackets worse than hornets? Are fire ants worse than honeybees? Nobody in the world of science knew for sure. That is, until a young upstart by the name of Justin Schmidt decided to bolt go where no entomologist has gone before. But how did he plan to quantify the level of pain caused by different insect stings? Well, it went something like this. Alright, honeybee. Zzz, ow, god, that hurt. I'll give that like a two. Next, paper wasp. Zzz, ah! Okay, that's like a three. Next, let's try bullet ant. Jesus Christ, Mary Mother of Satan's left nipple, it's like my hand is made entirely out of urethras, and each and every one is having a red-hot catheter put in and ripped out five times every second. My very being is on fire. My only desire left is for death himself to bless me with sweet relief. I'll give that a four. No. Four plus. In all seriousness, though, I'm pretty sure the index is meant to be logarithmic, like earthquake magnitudes. So just like a magnitude 7 earthquake is 10 times as powerful as a magnitude 6, a bullet ant sting causes 100 times as much pain as a honeybee. In total, Schmidt catalogs 78 different species of the order Hymenoptera, which includes ants, bees, and wasps. You can tell a man is really dedicated to his job when, after getting stung by 77 insects, he says to himself, you know what? That wasn't enough. I need one more creature to inject its venom into me, and only then will this list be complete. I guess you could say, he just really gave a schmidt. No, 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 no. Next is the Waffle House Index. So for those of you that didn't know, the Waffle House is one of the most resilient establishments in the world. Whereas most restaurants would simply close down in the event of, say, a hurricane, Waffle House just goes from their normal mode to disaster response mode, following extensive protocol that allows that location to keep serving customers in spite of low food supply or even a power outage. In response to this business practice, FEMA came up with what is known as the Waffle House Index, which is a system to easily assess how badly an area is damaged by a natural catastrophe. If the Waffle House is fully open, they're in the green, which means things are basically fine. If the Waffle House is using their low supply menu, you're in the yellow, which means that the area is almost certainly mid-disaster. Finally, if you're in the red, that means the Waffle House is either closed or gone. Now that's a sign of some real nuclear zombie holocaust type shit going down, so if you're not already dead, you should probably vacate the area. Most engineers could tell you that, structurally speaking, the triangle is the strongest of all shapes. But I believe that there's one shape that's even stronger. Godspeed, Waffle House. Next, we have the APGAR score. So the APGAR score is a rating system used by hospitals to determine how healthy a newborn baby is on a scale from 0 to 10. It's called APGAR based on its five criteria, which include appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiration. And each of these is rated on a scale from 0 to 2 to get your final score. Personally, I think this set of standards is a little flawed. Here's an example. Well, it's completely blue, and it doesn't really want to move at all, but it's got a really fast heartbeat, and it's screaming really loudly. I'd give this baby like a 6 out of 10. That's good enough. So in response, I've invented my own rating system. It's called the RAGU score. R is for reflexes. It's common knowledge that if you hold any healthy baby by its feet and then drop it, it'll always land upright. If your baby can't do that, that's a sure sign that it's defective. A is for abnormality. If your baby seems weird, that's typically a good indicator that it's weird. G still stands for grimace, just like in the APGAR test, only instead of looking at the baby's facial expression, you just bring grimace from McDonald's into the room and see how the baby reacts. If it starts crying, that's a good sign, because grimace is absolutely fucking terrifying. And finally, U is for ugliness, just because that might sway your decision on whether or not you want to keep it. Now, if the baby passes the test, it gets to go home, but if it fails, then it gets shipped off to the factory and made into ragu, hence the name of the test. Some people might be upset by this fact, but you know what they say, pray go today, ragu tomorrow. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Today's video has been sponsored by Ragu Brand Pasta Sauce. Like the taste of pureed infants? Then you'll love Ragu Pasta Sauce.